Hey friends, how's it going? It's been a while, hasn't it? We are totally going to be bringing back Facebook Lives. For those of you that are gonna be listening to this later on the Kelly O Show podcast, hey to you and get ready because this is gonna be a diet talk, smackdown, throwdown, and I'm so excited. So let me just introduce the topic. Um, in the title of this post, I said I'm bringing diet back. And what I mean by that is, y'all know I have been in the fitness space for a long time. As a consumer, somebody who's a fitness fanatic myself, who loves everything about fitness, getting fit, losing weight, um, achieving my best personal um, goal weight, my best personal physical uh, fitness, I'm losing my train of thought on what I'm trying to say, my best, reaching my personal best uh, in my fitness journey. But here's the deal. I have struggled with some serious, hi Marsha, how are you? Um, I've struggled with some real health challenges the past couple of years, as many of you know, and I've had some ups and downs. I've had some times where I've hit some really fantastic uh, results. Then I've had some times where I've gone complete opposite. I've followed some horrible advice. So everything that I'm gonna share with you here is based on my massive and very recent, hi Tommy, hi Elle, um, just massive awareness, massive, holy cow, I've been wasting a lot of time. Holy cow, I've been doing it all wrong. Holy cow, I wish I knew this three years ago. And a lot of this is getting back to the basics. Um, it's so good to see all of you. Um, but I'm gonna share with you everything that I have learned or relearned or become aware of what's important and what's not important. There's, there's far less that we're all missing there's a small amount that is really, really, really important for all of us. If you wanna get fit, break through a weight loss plateau, and, and hit your goal weight and, and achieve all of your fitness goals. There's a really small amount of stuff we need to be focusing on, but too many of us aren't. Okay, so look at this as like 20% of, of all the stuff that's out there that you could be focusing on, you could be worrying about, whatever. 80% of what most of us are obsessing over, worrying about, freaking out about, focusing on, is absolutely not necessary. It doesn't mean that it's all bad for you, okay? And I'm gonna go through that. But what I'm about to tell you is, and there's this one piece of hair that's really bothering me. Um, hey, Molly, um, and now I just made it worse. You know I gotta fix that, you guys. Messy hair don't care, but I do care. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna tell you. When you learn that so much of what many of you have probably been worrying about, freaking out about, stressing about, and I see so many of you, I see so many of you are private messaging me and going, oh my God, you know, when it comes to, for example, intermittent fasting, you know, some of you are like, and, and I do it, so this is not bashing fasting. Um, Oh my God, it, you know, I, I realized that the almond milk that I put in my coffee in the morning has 30 more calories than I thought. Have I ruined everything I've done? How many of you said stuff like that? How many of you are obsessing over, you know, the fact that you had an apple and you think that an apple is going to ruin your weight loss? When you want to lose weight, if you've been stuck at a plateau, if you have been talking about losing the last 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds for the past five years, two years, over a year, if you've been talking about losing weight and you have not made any progress, you're probably doing most of the same thing you've been doing for a long time, and yet you think you're gonna get different results. It's like that phrase, right? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. We all do it, I've done it. But I'm here to give you some major, I'm just, I'm, I'm warning you, I guarantee that you are going to have, because every single person I've had this conversation with, whether it's people I'm coaching from a fitness and nutrition perspective, or just friends and colleagues, or people who are on my isogenics team, we have this conversation and somebody will always say in the middle of this conversation, oh my God, that's exactly me. That's exactly what I've been doing. And then they have this like, holy crap moment of all the time they've wasted, but then how excited they are because now they know what they need to fix. And that's really the key, okay? So many of us are frustrated because we, we feel like we're spinning our wheels. How many of you, and hi Diane, how many of you feel like you're spinning your wheels? How many of you feel like you're stabbing in the dark? I felt that way for months with this whole headache and migraine situation I've been dealing with. 
It is frustrating as hell to want to do something and feel like you're just guessing. Like, well, let me try this. And that, that can be the problem because when you feel like you're guessing, you're not gonna stick with anything. When you feel like you're just throwing something up against the wall, you're not gonna stick with it. So that's the purpose of me coming on here. Because frankly, number one, when I realized this most recently, and guys and gals, I'm talking about it's now February, I really had this first moment of awareness in December. So just a couple of months ago, I've been at this fitness game for a long time and I've never in the past eight to nine years ever, I've made great results. I've never reached my goal weight. I have never once been to the place where I'm like, I am absolutely happy where I am right now. How many of you can say that? Not many because most people that are following me when I do a poll, they all say, I'm stuck at a plateau. I can't lose that last five, 10, 15, 20 pounds or more, okay? Everybody's stuck. I'm gonna make it a hell of a lot more simple and doable for you. And no, I'm not selling some crazy package. <laughs> yes, if you want, I've got some options for you that can help you, but you don't need to. You can do this on your own and you're gonna love it. So. Here's what I'm gonna cover in today's Facebook Live. I'm obviously fired up about this, you guys. The reason I'm fired up is because this was life-changing for me to figure part, of, the first step I figured out in December and the second step I figured out even most recently when I was catching myself winging it again. And a big part of what we're gonna talk about is why winging it doesn't work and why diet has to be that unsexy word that we need to make sexy again because it's gonna be your best friend, okay? If you don't wanna be stuck anymore, you need to become besties with the concept of diet again, and I'll explain why. So today, we're gonna to talk about, you know how they always say, oh, you can't say diet without using the word die. I'm gonna say you can't say diet without having the word tied, which means you need to clean up your thinking about diet, because diet is not a four-letter word. Diet is not a bad thing, and for most of us, how many of you, leave a comment in the comments below, how many of you have been dieting for like 10 years? How many of you can say, because I know most of you that private message me on social media will say this, Kelly, I've been at this for five years. I've been eating healthy and working out for three or four years and I'm not getting anywhere. I've got news for you and I have news for myself. I had to do the same thing with myself. If you have been dieting and watching what you're eating and trying to get somewhere, you're not supposed to diet year round. You're not supposed to be trying to lose weight year round. The whole purpose of a diet is supposed to be temporary. You hit your goal, you work really hard for a certain period of time, you hit your goal, and then you very carefully move into a maintenance mode. How many of you have just been, in your mind, continually dieting, continually working on losing weight, but you're not getting there. If, you, if that's you, this is not gonna be pleasurable for you to hear. You're not doing it right. You are overcomplicating it, and you, you can save yourself a lot of time and make yourself hit your goal weight and get, your, get, your, your progr get that progress under your belt and move into like a lifestyle mode where you're not dieting and obsessing about food. But the bottom line is, and it was actually when I interviewed Bonnie Feaster on uh, this podcast. I will make sure I link to that below in the comments. Head on over to the Kelly O Show podcast. Listen to the interview I did with Bonnie Feaster. Bonnie Feaster is a trainer, somebody who's competed multiple times. She and her husband have a personal training business in Orlando. And on that interview, you know, she said such a profound but very simple point that's very true and something I'm going to reinforce today, which is. Too many people don't really, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, too many people don't go at it hard enough when they want to lose weight. Like they basically give it 60 to 70% effort and they wing it and they cut corners and they make exceptions. They don't realize it, okay? So a lot of us, I'm gonna share with you two examples, two of my personal examples that are very typical of how I've been winging it and making exceptions and not realizing it. And friends, this is such a key takeaway point. So many of you are cutting corners, making exceptions, winging it, and you think you're doing a lot better than you are. When I first started counting calories again and really just paying attention to my caloric deficit in December, do you know what I thought? I really thought my number one problem was I wasn't eating enough. And the truth is, 
I was eating way too much. And most of us, and, and many of you that have been following me for a while know, you've heard me say that, oh, my problem is I get so caught up in work that I don't eat enough. And a lot of us can think that, okay? But I will give you two very crystal clear examples that I guarantee will resonate with many of you and you will go, oh my God, that's so me. So what back to what Bonnie was saying on that podcast, and I will link to it below. She's like, too many people are stretching out, trying to lose weight for so long, when if they just be really serious for maybe it's six weeks, maybe it's eight weeks, maybe it's 90 days, it really depends on where you are and how much weight you have to lose. But if people would take it a lot more seriously, and it doesn't mean going on a cabbage soup and grass diet, okay? That's not what we're talking about. But if you would take it more seriously and say, you know what, for a short period of time, I really have to change my lifestyle, improve my nutrition, focus on my sleep. You know, like I have to make a concerted effort. This whole idea of people who bash the word diet, and this is big, this is permeating the whole fitness industry. This whole idea of don't diet, make it a lifestyle, that's bullshit. And I challenge anybody to debate this with me. I'm not a trainer. I am studying to be a trainer this year though. So I'm just letting you know. I'm not a trainer. I'm not a dietitianist. Dietitianist. <laughs> Dietitian, nutritionist, or a doctor. I just hang out, hang out with a lot of them. And I know enough to know that when we say, don't diet, just make it a lifestyle. Just eat clean, just eat paleo, just shop at Whole Foods, just shop at Trader Joe's, just watch your portions, just eat intuitively. How many of you have been following any of that? Raise your hand, leave a comment in the comments below. I wanna hear from you. If you've been following that advice and it's not working for you and you're still 20 pounds overweight, how, what is that telling you? It's not working, it, you can't do that. I used to I used to be one of those people's like, yeah, you shouldn't diet, it shouldn't be that hard, make it a lifestyle. We're making it too easy. And what happens is when we make it too easy and we don't make a big enough change, nothing in our body is going to change. If you change nothing, nothing will change, okay? So let me, I actually have notes written down here to make sure I go over everything I wanna go out, go through. But to, to give you the overwhelming, um, overarching topic of what, what we're going to talk about today is number one, if you want to lose weight, if you want to get fit and you're stuck, you need to look at diet as something that is not a four letter word. It is not a dirty word. It is something that you need to embrace. And I will explain why that doesn't have to be torture because I am dieting right now and I have figured out something that is extremely livable, allows me to see weight loss every single week, enjoy treats, and I mean carbs, and a cheat day. And I don't care if some people out there are like, I don't wanna say cheat day. You know, that, that, that implies this. You know, we need to like stop overanalyzing everything. If I wanna call it a cheat day, if you wanna call it a cheat day, if you wanna call it an indulgent day, whatever, call it whatever you want. It's called eating what you want day. That's what I call it. I figured out a way to diet, hitting a caloric deficit, cycling my calories, I use intermittent fasting and one cleanse day a week, and then I get to have whatever I want pretty much on Friday and Saturday. So like, I'm enjoying alcohol, I'm enjoying adult beverages, I'm enjoying pasta if I want, I'm not cutting out huge food groups, and I'm losing weight. So I don't wanna say that that's a lifestyle because, you know, but it's livable, but I'm still dieting and I'm not planning to do this the second half of the year. I'm planning to do it really seriously, really hard, really focused so I hit my results and then I can leave this phase behind. That's what too many of us, myself included in the past, have not been doing. Hi, Lorianne. So number one, we're gonna talk, obviously I've already talked about that. We need to get familiar and comfortable with the, with the idea that diet is not a dirty word and everything you've heard about don't diet, don't, you know, just make it a lifestyle. It's pretty much not working for 90% of us out there. And I, I, you know, if it's working for you, that's great. Um, I'm not gonna dispute that. So we wanna bring dieting back and, and I'm gonna talk again towards the end about why, um, how you need to just focus really hard and very seriously for a specific amount of time and then you move into a more maintenance mode. If you're not doing that, if you're dieting year round, there's something wrong, then you're not doing it right, okay? 
and I can help you, I've learned how to help myself. Because when I made some of these simple tweaks, and people, again, I, I hope, some of you might be listening going, is this an infomercial? Where's the catch? What is she gonna be selling? No, I mean, you can do this without a gym, without a personal trainer, without a dietitian. just starting to use a notebook to, to track what you're eating. You don't have to, there are things that can help you level up. Yeah, a trainer can help you level up. Yeah, a dietitian can help you level up. Yeah, I have products I recommend that can improve your nutrition, but you don't have to. So trust me when I tell you, if you take my advice and you're really serious and you're tired of going into this season every year and going, yeah, another year that I'm, I don't feel comfortable going to the pool. I don't feel comfortable in my bikini. Do you? Do you? If somebody asked you and said, I'm giving you a free trip next week to the Bahamas, and I'm going to give you all expenses paid and I'm going to, you know, you're going to be out at the beach and you're going to, you're going to be in photo shoots, whatever. How would you feel? Because if you're like me, like most women, somebody says that to you and says, you're going to the beach next week. You're like, oh, and you're immediately thinking how you can get out of it. That is not a place to be because you can absolutely get into the best shape of your life, regardless of what age you are, regardless of whether you've had kids, regardless of what all your excuses are, because I can tell you, I've made all those excuses for years. How many of you have been following me and know how long I've been talking about my hypothyroidism? Like it's the biggest barrier to why I, ha why I haven't lost weight. It's not. I'm able to lose weight with hypothyroidism, with the fact that I'm 50 years old, I'm in menopause, I have hormonal imbalance, I have hypothyroidism, I've had insulin resistance, I'm trying to think of what are the other issues I've had. Pretty much everything, but you can also call it excusalitis because that's like making excuses. And this is one of the things that I said I was gonna make sure I wanted to reinforce before we dive into some of the four or five different meaty topics that support everything we're talking about. The problem with women, and I think that this is much more a women thing, woman thing, women, women. <laughs> we want it all, but we don't want to do it all, okay? I'm gonna let that sink in for a minute. Women, the problem with women, particularly when it comes to weight loss, we want it all, but we're really, if we're honest with ourselves, not willing to do it all. What do I mean by that? I can guarantee you that if you're watching this live or if you're watching this on the replay, this, if you're honest with yourself, will resonate and hit home with you, okay? How many of you ladies out there have heard yourself say out loud or you've said to somebody or you've said it repeatedly over the past several years, I've tried everything. I must be the only one that I can't lose weight. I must be the only one that diets don't work for. I must be the only one, you know, that, that's tried this beach body program and it doesn't work. I, you know, I've tried everything, it doesn't work. I, I've dieted, I've been dieting for 10 years, nothing works for me. How many of you have said that? And then how many of you have said something similar to, I would literally pay any amount of money if somebody could just show me exactly what to do so that I know I would reach my goal weight. How many of you said that? I've said it. I mean, I've said, I can't tell you how many times. I would say, I just wish that somebody could take me and put me into a hospital for 60 days. I've been desperate, you guys. I felt like nothing I could do would work. I was always stuck. I was always 20 pounds overweight, just always like fit enough that people didn't think I really had a problem, but never comfortable enough going to the beach and always blaming my thyroid. And I would say, God, I wish I could just go to, you know, some like Canyon Ranch program where, you know, you sit there and you go away and somebody takes you and tells you exactly what to eat. And, and I kept saying to myself, how many of you have said that? If I would just, if I could just go away to a farm or a retreat and they could show me how to lose the weight, then I would keep it off. How many of you have said that? How many of you have said I would pay any amount of money if I could just find a program that I know I'm tired of trying, I'm tired of experimenting. I just want to know what do I do? How many women say that? I hear it all the time. I've been one of them that said it. But yet, I can't tell you how many women I know that when they decide to commit to a program, this program, Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem, um, a Beach Body program, this 90 day challenge, this 12 week challenge, they start it. The second they start it, they start bitching and they go, you know what, this, I'm not allowed to have wine. I can't have wine. I mean, how am I supposed to function? Do you know that I have kids? I'm going to add the wine back in. How many of you have done that? Okay. You start cutting the corners and you start making exceptions and you go, well, this is crazy. I mean, they say I can't intermittent fasting. I'm on this fasting program and now suddenly I can't have breakfast and I'm worried about a 
30 calorie cup of coffee, screw that. And then you start adding things back in. Or then you start saying, oh, well, I just, this workout program, they're expecting me to do an hour of working out every day. It can't be that much of a problem if I just do half an hour. Half an hour has to make something. So you start tweaking and bitching and moaning and, you know, I'm gonna take this out, I'm gonna move that over there. And then you go, oh, well, I missed yesterday's workout. And then you say to yourself, well, if, if me missing one workout is gonna mean that I can't lose weight, well, screw it, then there's something wrong because I'm doing everything else right. It's the same principle, people. If a doctor prescribes you 10 days of penicillin, you need to take 10 days of penicillin. You can't say, I'm gonna take it for one day and then I'm gonna take it on Friday and that's gonna fix my strep throat. It doesn't work that way. But that's what we do. Hey, Shara, nice to hear from you. That's what we do with dieting. We bitch and moan and we say, I would do anything, I would do anything. This hair is really having issues. I would do anything. And then we, we pick something and immediately we start bitching about it. And then we start picking it apart and then we start winging it. Those are the things that have to stop. So if you're watching this now, if you're watching this on the replay, do yourself a favor, have the hard conversation. To, to, to look at yourself and look at your activity and look at how diligent you've been because it's not easy to face sometimes, it's not. I remember distinctly a conversation I had with my mom three or four years ago where I was bitching, just like I said to all of you a second ago, I was bitching, I've tried everything, I work out, I eat chicken breast, I eat broccoli, I do this, blah, 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 blah. My mom's like, and I don't think she knew how profound what she said was. She goes, are you sure that you're like tracking everything you're doing? Because Kelly, you seem to be so fitness focused and so, you know, into this, but you're not, and she wasn't saying I can see you look gross. She was just basically saying like, you're telling me you're not seeing results, but you seem to be trying so hard. Like, are you sure that you're trying? And I'm like, I remember I looked at her, I'm like, mom, are you serious? Like, I know what I'm eating, whatever. How many of you have said that? How many of you, if somebody asks you, are you tracking what you're eating? You're like, I know what I'm eating. How many of you, okay? A lot of you that are watching this are like me. You've been at your fitness game for a long time, and so you think you know it all, and you think you're good, and you think that you're on top of what you're eating, and you think that you're in a caloric deficit, or you think that you're eating within your macro window, and I've got news for you, you probably aren't. If you're stuck, you're probably not. And if you're not tracking your food and you're not tracking, food is of utmost importance, okay? And I was the one, every single trainer who told me to keep a food diary or log things in my fitness pal, this was me. Oh my God, like I don't have time for that. And yet I'm the same person simultaneously who's like, I would do anything. I don't know why I can't lose weight, blah, blah, blah. And yet I'd be leaving my training program or my training session with Blaine at Gold's Gym and driving over to HEB and getting a dozen, not a dozen, I'd get half a dozen um, donuts and I'd eat them in the car on the way home because I convinced myself, oh, I just had a hard leg day and I'm training so much harder than this faster rate of fat loss program. So instead of having one donut, I'm gonna have six. And then I would, you know, make all of these different accommodation and excuses. So every single time I try a program, I would tweak it and I would bend it and I would add this and, and incorporate this person's input, incorporate this person's input. How many of you guys are doing that? You're like mixing and matching all of these different diets. It doesn't work that way. There is no one singular diet program that is above all the rest. Tons of them can work, but most of them, when they work, they work because if you do it and you focus and you do it right, you are in a caloric deficit. And I challenge you, look at anything you see out there on social media. If you see something that says, we've got this exogenous ketones program, it's amazing, go look at the diet. It's like, you know, you have two shakes and a meal for dinner and in between you drink like 30 calories of exogenous ketones. I've got news for you, you're in a caloric deficit. It's not the ketones that are making you lose weight. Going keto isn't the magic solution for losing weight. The reason that people lose weight on keto is because they typically eat less because they have less foods to choose from and so they're in a caloric deficit. Weight Watchers, if you do it and you do it right and you follow the points, you should be in a caloric deficit. That's why you lose weight. It's like the problem is people go, oh, I wanna go on keto and then they go, oh, 
yeah, but I don't, I don't like that and I don't have any energy. So I'm sure it's okay if I just add in some carbs and I'm sure it's okay if I add in this or that or whatever. How many of you have done that? We've all done it. You can't mix and match. You can't find, here's the hard cold truth that so many of us, I know you hear this and you'll go, well, of course, but that's really what all of us are trying to do. There's no way that if you need to lose weight, you will be able to eat whatever you want, however much you want, not work out if you hate working out, not track your food and lose weight. I mean, it, it just doesn't work that way. At some point, you have to cut back, scale back, give your body a complete change and, and that means dieting. Like you, you can't say, I'm gonna take a little bit of this diet, a little bit of this diet, a little bit of this diet, and I'm only gonna work out the amount that I want. Then you're basically not changing anything and you deserve to stay right where you are. That's the cold hard truth that many of us are avoiding. So that's something that we all need to get a handle on is number one, if you're a woman, and a lot of the things I'm talking about here when I say these apply to women, if you're a man and you're watching this, many, I, I've just observed in my personal experience and my professional experience, men tend to, I don't know, like take dieting a little bit more seriously they tend to dive in. They don't worry about the things that women worry about. They're not as insecure and self-conscious as women are. But if you're watching this and you're of the male species, <laughs> please know that any of this stuff can apply to you. But I'm just, I'm speaking to women because I know more women get hung up on these things, okay? So let me just reiterate what I said in part one. If you are watching this and you are still stuck, and you haven't been able to lose weight and you feel like you've been trying for a long time, two things. Number one, you need to get comfortable with the word diet and the concept of dieting because you're kidding yourself if you think you've been doing it right and if you think you've been doing it effectively for all this time. If you, if you really can say, I've been trying for three or four years, I've been trying for all of this time, it's not supposed to be that way. We're not supposed to be dieting all of our lives. It's supposed to be a temporary measure. And number two, if you're a woman and you're watching this and you've made any of the excuses that I've just shared with you, if you've said, I would do anything, I would do anything to lose this weight. I will, you know, just tell me what to do. I'll do anything. I'll pay any amount of money. But then you get the opportunity to do it and you make excuses. That's too expensive. I don't want to spend that money. I don't want to do shakes. I don't want to do this. I don't want to work out. I can't fast. I have kids. I can't work out of the gym. Then you deserve to stay right where you are because it's not that difficult. It's not that expensive. It's doable for everybody. Bam. Let's get into the meat. I'm going to talk today about some of the myths that all of us have been, remember I said at the beginning of this video, I said so many of us that have been stuck for so long, we're, we're, we're spending our time over here worrying about 80% of stuff that doesn't matter. That is, it's causing us stress, we're obsessing about it, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go over all of those myths, myths, it's very hard to say plural, that are permeating, still permeating the fitness industry, just like the whole idea that you don't have to diet to lose weight. You know, just eat intuitively, that's BS. I just saw something the other day and I would absolutely debate this person if they wanted to. I'm gonna show you what we're, what, what we're obsessing about that we don't need to obsess about, what we aren't obsessing about and paying attention to, which is very simple but very profound and that we all need to focus on if we wanna hit our fitness goals and lose weight and be able to get past this, like reach our goal and start enjoying life. Maintenance is just as much of a focused effort, everyone. It's not like you diet and then it's just easy street and you can eat pizza all day. It doesn't work that way. But wouldn't you rather get to maintenance where you're like, hey, I've got the body I want. I'm feeling fly. I can go on vacation at the drop of a hat anytime. If somebody invites me to go out somewhere in shorts or a bikini, I'm not obsessing and stressing about it. That's where we wanna get so that we can stop having to focus on always trying to get there and instead, let's just get there and start enjoying life in maintenance mode. That's the beauty. That's what we're, we're, what we're aiming for. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to share with you guys some very specific examples from my own life 
that I believe will illustrate very effectively for you how easy it is to slip into the, the sloppy mode where you think you're dieting, you think you're eating right, you think you're doing everything right, but you're not. I'm gonna show you two examples from my own life. I guarantee you, you will listen to them and go, oh my God, she's right. Like, that's what I've been doing.